Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, as we look at machine learning uh, use cases like uh, TensorFlow workflows, for example, uh, it's all about getting the analysis done as fast as possible. Latency becomes a big issue. And so we're seeing technologies like Intel Optane come to market. Uh, but you just can't throw Intel Optane into uh, one of these infrastructures and expect great results. So joining me to talk about that today is Charles Fan. He's from Members and he's the CEO. Charles, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure to be here. So Charles, let, let's talk about this. Let's. So what's the problem with, what are some of the challenges that TensorFlow workflows are uh, struggling with and, and why are, you know, kind of like why are they looking at Intel sure. Optane to start with? Sure. Uh, TensorFlow is one of the popular frameworks uh, dealing with machine learning workloads. Right. And uh, as the data gets more and more, uh, bigger and bigger in capacity and also faster and faster in coming in, uh, there's a bottleneck exposing the memory size okay. as well in the storage I.O. to serve the machine learning okay. training problems. So it's partly an ingestion problem and then it's a later kind of a post-process problem as well. Exactly. Okay, got it. And uh, uh, today, uh, the state of art of TensorFlow is distributed training, okay. when you have multiple servers okay. in order to have enough memory to serve the model. And in those cases, these problems are made worse. Okay. Right. So, um, and Optane is a storage class memory. Right. It's almost as fast as memory. It's also uh, much bigger than memory, and it's much faster than storage. Okay. So it has two benefits. One is it enlarges the memory of these training servers, okay. so you need less of them to do the same problem. Right. Secondly, you have faster IOs for the storage ingestion, and that allows you to complete the training much faster than before. So in, in, in obviously in your picture, you, you've draw, drawn four here. In a, in a typical TensorFlow environment, there would be uh, like hundreds, right? Yes, in the typical environment, it could be dozens or even hundreds okay. of uh, training machines. And these typically have CPUs inside and some of them have GPUs inside okay. to perform the training. And, and so keeping those GPUs especially busy is really critical to the workflow, right? Th that's right. Okay, so then, uh, so, so enter Intel Optane. Yes. Uh, let's, let's give a quick uh, maybe 30 seconds on what Intel Optane is. I think you just kind of hit a little bit, but it's sure. sort of a, a, a tweener, right? It's in between DRAM yeah. and Flash, right? Exactly. All right, so why don't you go ahead and show us the before. Okay, so here is a picture without Optane our software. Uh -huh. You have servers, there could be a dozen, two dozen, or a hundred, and each server uh, have local drives are there to store the intermediate data, uh -huh. and then also to store the checkpoint. Uh, and the checkpoint is there, exactly for failure situations because you can have uh, a failure once you have so many machines checkpoint so that you don't have rollback to the very beginning of the gotcha. training job. And, and I would assume that today the, the, the storage technology is probably SSD. flash or NVMe? Yes, flash? so okay. these are NVMe SSD or other type of SSD. In some cases people you still use HDDs okay. as well on those local drives. And you, of course you have DRAM and typically they need a lot of DRAM because machine learning is very memory intensive sure. uh, workload, especially with TensorFlow. And the HDFS is there to store the source data where all your training, training data is stored there and they are being ingested into this farm so that it can be processed by the TensorFlow engine. Gotcha. And then there's the machine learning model that is being divided and placed on all these servers and TensorFlow manage all these processes. Gotcha. Um, for different machine learning problems, there are different sizes of machine learning models. Okay. Um, and uh, obtain as well as our software is particularly useful when the model is large. Okay. Uh, so those situations, you have a higher data density uh, or high, uh, some more data intensive machine learning training where the bottleneck is more in the size of memory and in the uh, amount of I.O. And that's where Obtain, our solution come in to accelerate. Okay, so why don't you show how that looks? So, so here is how Obtain come in. So you put Obtain on each of the servers. And they are sitting sort of between DRAM and SSDs. Gotcha. And you are using them as actually a central point of the underlying media. Okay. And then you lay our software. This is a Memverge software. On top of the uh, servers, and then you run TensorFlow uh, on top of our uh, software. Okay. So the TensorFlow starts talking to Memverge. To Memverge. For, okay. So we became like a software construct. Okay. in terms of memory services and storage services to them. And we do essentially two things. Okay. We virtualize all the obtains so that we access obtain in the app direct mode, okay. which is the most powerful mode obtain presents. It okay. gives you all the benefits uh, it has. And then we present them in compatible APIs to, uh, to TensorFlow. 
so that TensorFlow memory can be accessing memory through our layer. The benefit is suddenly they got 10 times more memory uh, for it to use. So potentially you can have less servers in the cluster, which is present cost savings sure. and also ease of deployment uh, right. for, the, uh, uh, for the users. We also present storage uh, API to the application. And that's where our second benefit comes in, is we are the world's first memory-centric uh, distributed file system designed for storage cost memory. Okay. So essentially we place data across these nodes and we replicate them, make sure they are well protected, and we offer the right data services. So it's memory speed storage services offered to the applications. So TensorFlow applications suddenly get bigger memory and faster storage, okay. and they don't need to change a thing. So there's no application needed well, and, and uh, to the TensorFlow. Faster is one of the key benefits of, the, of this is very low latency, which I think is probably really kind of critical for these environments, right? We, yes, that, that's why that's the key benefit of okay. uh, the Optane Media. Now, I, I, we were talking earlier, you said Said you also manage moving the, the data between the, the three types of storage we have drawn up there, yes. too, is that correct? Yes, we do. Uh, that's a great uh, question. Uh, so essentially, we can still use the DRAM on these servers. And how DRAM is being used, it's used to cache the obtained memory uh, for the memory services that we're providing to TensorFlow. Okay. Uh, so TensorFlow at 100 to 250 nanosecond latency is still a little bit slower than DRAM, which operates at about 20 to 50 nanoseconds. Okay. So there are about five times performance difference in terms of latency. Right. Uh, with the right amount of cache, we can narrow that difference. Uh, so typically, with tens TensorFlow workload, for the using the memory service, we are seeing about 10% degradation okay. when you're using the Optane memory with the right amount of DRAM cache. Okay. And then the SSD is there to uh, enhance the uh, storage services. Uh, to make the capacity even larger and uh, the economics even better uh, for your storage services. So essentially we have three tiers of physical media where DRAM and Optane enables a memory service and Optane and SSD enables the storage service. And all these are provided in the software construct so they are composable and they are dynamically reconfigurable uh, to, to support the applications. Okay. So then if I'm a a TensorFlow environment, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm managing, and I'm responsible for managing that. And I want to put Memverge in. What changes do I need to uh, make to my TensorFlow environment to take advantage of uh, Memverge? Uh, short answer: None. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and good answer, right? Yeah. So, yes. so basically, I just drop this in. I, I assume I install a piece of software on every one of my servers. Or yes. Is, okay. Uh, yeah. So we are a software-only solution. Right. And uh, you just uh, have the server of choice, you know, from your favorite server vendors okay. and just load our software on top okay. of these servers. We actually have a, a sort of a installation facility allow you to easily install our software across all these servers uh, without physically logging to each server. Okay, so if I do have a dozen, a couple dozen servers, you right. can push it out yes, for me. Yes, okay. yes, we can And then at that point, then I just, uh, TensorFlow just kind of goes through Memverge to get to the data and you guys manage this underneath before me. That, that's right. And, and, and just raising another point is I'm drawing a data center here where you use physical machines and uh, run our Memverge on top of it. We also support well the cloud environments. Oh, okay. So, you know, once the cloud service providers have the right storage class memory hardware underneath, uh, we can run well in the VMs okay. uh, on the uh, cloud as well as in the VMs in the local data center as well. Huh. So okay. you, you basically get our software and can deploy anywhere, bring your own license. It, it, it feels like to me that you've actually made things simpler. Like if, if I just yeah. dropped Intel uh, Optane in or whatever the storage class memory right. is, I, I, it sounds like I have a, a added burden to try to correctly manage that. And it sounds like me to me, you're actually, not only are you running it in a better mode for right. me, but you're also managing that flow right. for me, right? Right, right. I think our main value proposition are three things. One is uh, we make it simpler, like okay. you said. So you uh, actually can manage it in a, in a much easier way, rather than configuring BIOS. Right. All this is a click on the GUI. You can, you can, you can right. reconfigure okay. it. Good. The, the second is really the agility and the uh, flexibility, where you can move between storage and memory and memory to storage, and we can op optimize those IOs. So what is IO? is actually movement from memory to storage and storage to memory. Yeah. That's the I and the O. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, by our software, while they are different services to the applications, they actually land on the same media. In some cases, we can eliminate those IOs through our layer. So we can really make it flexible uh, and fast. Okay. Right. So the third is uh, uh, scale out and distribute it. So if you're just having a single node obtained, you cannot really have 
uh, story services because there you cannot tolerate failures. Right, sure. You, you may lose data. Right. So persistence doesn't do much right. if you okay. don't have replication. Yeah. So uh, so the um, uh, what we do is we created a distributed file system uh, that allow you to go across multiple nodes. Uh, you know that's built on top of the Intel hardware. Um, but just having the hardware on a local node doesn't give you a storage service, just like a SSD doesn't give you an enterprise storage system. Okay, that makes sense. Well, let's end with this. So we talked a lot about TensorFlow. Obviously, that's a machine learning workflow. So right. it, it, anything in that machine learning space, I, it sounds like you would yeah. be a good fit for. Other use cases that you guys are getting interest in? Yeah, so besides TensorFlow, we also support very well Spark okay. uh, platforms and Presto. And uh, we are looking at Kafka and various uh, you know, streaming uh, processing frameworks. Uh, we have found uh, a lot of traction actually recently with financial industries, okay. with the uh, both the stream data processing as well as the historic data uh, processing that we can offer much higher performance. So essentially any use case that has demand for a larger memory right. or a demand for a faster I.O., we are potentially a good play there. Okay, great. Well, Charles, thanks very much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. All right. Well, there you have it. If you're looking to really optimize and, and really simplify your implementation of Intel Optane into either a machine learning uh, workflow like TensorFlow or other workflows uh, that require high capacity and fast uh, throughput and low latency, uh, this is a great solution to consider. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.